So lots of folks had trouble with question four uh, from your assignment, which was how many ways are there to choose two pairs from a standard deck of cards? Now this is another one of those questions that is intentionally a little bit ambiguous because, for example, you could have two of one value, two of another value, and another third value, or perhaps you have two of one value and three of another value, which in something like poker we would call a full house. Um, you can see there, there are two pairs. There's a pair here and a pair here plus another kind of copy of that card. Uh, or you could have uh, four of a kind and then one other card. Um, this is still two pairs. There is sort of one other possible case. Um, if we weren't talking about poker, you could have three of one card and then uh, one of each of two other values. These three cards would form uh, pairs. For example, if you had the nine of hearts and the nine of diamonds and the nine of spades, here's a pair, here's a pair, and these two on the outside also make a pair. There would actually be three pairs there if you were counting things that way. But we're not going to use that case because that's a little bit unusual. But let's look at these other cases. This is sort of the case I was thinking of when I wrote the question, um, but we're going to consider all of these as we go. But this first one is kind of the hardest one. So um, we're going to count um, all. Of, we're going to count all these cases by selecting cards, and then we have to divide by the number of sort of orders we could pick those cards in as we go. So we're going to sort of write as as a permutation, and then turn it into a combination with some division. So let's start by selecting a card to be um, part of our first pair. The way I like to think about this is to choose any card in the deck, and there are 52 cards to choose from. And then after we have selected that card, if I want to make a pair, there are only three other cards in the deck that match that card. So this is any choice, choice of any card, 52 of them, and then one of the other three cards uh, that will make a pair, which is a different suit. But of course, I could choose those in two different orders, or two factorial different orders, because there are two cards there. And then I'm going to select another pair, and it will have a different value in this case. There are 48 cards remaining that don't have the same value as my first card. There are three cards with the same value as the second choice, or I suppose third choice. And again, we could have chosen those in any order that we like. And last, we're going to choose one more card. There are only 44 cards left, and we don't need to divide. There's only one order to do that in. So uh, if we finish that off and simplify it, we get 123,552. Okay, so that's the case, this first case of uh, 2, 2, 1. Two of a, a pair, a different pair, and then a singleton. Let's look at case two, which we would call the full house case. So for this to happen, we're going to have the same sort of first thing. We select a card. There are three matching cards to make a pair, and we divide by the number of ways that we could arrange those two cards. But now I'm going to choose my three of a kind to go with this to make my full house. So again, I'm going to select a card from the 48 that remain, and then I'm going to select another card with the same value. So say this is the nine of hearts then I have three ways to choose another nine, let's say the nine of diamonds, and then I have to pick another card from the two that remain, uh, another nine, say, maybe a spade or a club, and then I have to divide by the number of orders to sele have selected these three cards, which is three factorial, and then I don't have any more cards, that's two cards and three cards already selected. Work that out, 3,744. All right, that was case two. Case three is that we have uh, the poker hand would be a four of a kind, four of one value and one other value. This one is kind of the easiest. There are 13 different values. I'm going to do this one slightly differently. There are 13 different values in the deck. So let's say we pick uh, sevens. We're going to take all of the sevens. So there aren't ways to arrange and select, uh, sorry, there aren't ways to arrange the sevens. If we were to try to arrange them, like 52 times 3 times 2 times 1, we would then be dividing by 4 factorial, and we'd end up with 13. Let me just show you that really fast. 52 times 3 times 2 times 1, 
choose like a seven, and then the other seven, the other seven, the other seven, and we would divide by four factorial, which just gives us 13. So we select which value we're gonna make our four of a kind out of, and then we pick one more card. Well, there are 39 cards. Oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, not 39. There would be uh, 48 cards left that match that value. Sorry, <laughs> I said it wrong again. Choose a card, make our four of a kind, 48 cards that do not match, and then it can be this extra card that's left over on the side. Uh, so that would be 13 times uh, 48. I didn't do that ahead of time, let me work that out, is uh, 624. Add up those three values, and I'll just do that off to the side here while you wait. 3744 plus 624 is 127. Yeah, 127,920 uh, total hands if we're counting um, all of these three different cases. Uh, this, as I said, this is sort of the value that I was expecting and, and expect, uh, thinking that you would come up with. But uh, if you're going to go the extra mile, there are all the cases right there.